right? You talk about whether you have a cash or not, how much loan you have taken. I think it should move forward so that it looks more legit. So in liquidity, you talk about whether you have the ability to pay your short term obligations or not, your salaries, can you pay that? Can you pay to your suppliers or not? Leverage means debt, how much debt you have. More debt means control is not on your side. Who invests the money or who is giving you as a loan, he exercises the control if you have too much debt. For example, 80% debt and 20% is your own money. It means 80% belongs to outsiders. And they can even tell you what to do and what not to do. If you are not following their demand, then they can go to the court and, liqu and liquidate the company. All right. And then activities through activities, you find out that whether your assets are generating sales or not, whether you have too much assets, whether you have low assets according to the sales. And last, the most powerful is the profitability ratio, which shows that whether you have a consistent profitability ratio or whether it's increasing, whether it is decreasing, whether it's according to the industry, according to your standards or not. And then, do we have any other kinds of control? Yes, information control. How information is sent, those who need that, whether it's a systematic way or whether it's a just raw data way. Okay, so a system which uses to provide management what they need on a regular basis so data means it is unorganized stuff and information is the required data you get from the raw data and makes it a very nice presentation that is the information that you need okay if i need only those data from those employees who are handicapped whether your organization is using a system who can provide you that information or not? Or should I have to go through all the data, okay, how many employees you have and how many employees are working under the handicap quota and then I'm physically looking at all those stuff and I'm counting that. If you are using MIS, there's just one click away. You just click on handicap, all the females, males, both categories came and you can find out that, okay, how many people are employed as handicapped. So how you can employ the information control through MIS. All right. Now, the balance scorecard, which is to evaluate normally, organizational performance so a balanced scorecard as its name employs balanced which means it look around some areas and find out whether you are in that balance or not so normally a balanced scorecard has four areas Financial, customer, internal organizational process, and the last one is organizational growth or creativity or innovation. So if you want to measure performance of anyone, any individual, any department, any manager, anyone, you measure it on balance scorecard. For example, if a person A, how this person is contributing to the overall financial performance of the company? How this person is 
performing with customer oriented whether he is contribution is increasing customer satisfaction or not the third one is internal processes whether this person is contributing to improve the organization standard or organizational procedures or processes or whether this person contribution is in organizational growth or innovation or not so normally in this section we talk about what extra skills he have if the person is using excel whether he has the skills of ppt or microsoft access or microsoft vb or not if he have extra extra skills then he can be used as innovative or growth skills whenever an organization needed this kind of skill they can contact him and he can contribute over there so anyone or any person or any department can be can get a balance score and if your balance score card score is above some criteria then they will say that you are efficient person your performance is good if it is less than the benchmark number your balance scorecard scores are low then they will find out where you are low if you are low here then they will give you training if you are low here then they can attach you through your supervisor some skilled person if you are low here then again they can train you and if you are low here then they can advise you whether you should be more productive to the organization or not if you are not contributing to the overall profitability if you are taking more than you are having your input then the next more chances are that you will be fired all right now the best practices are the one which can be measured or, or which can be compared so whenever you are comparing it means you have some kind of benchmark but selecting benchmark is an also art it is very difficult because how you can compare plus on which person or on which strategy or on which score or which standard you need to compare what is your benchmark so selecting benchmark is very important a marketing department must be benchmark with then with the marketing department rather than a production department because their functions are same and if you are comparing marketing department performance with the production department performance then that is wrong because their roles are different similarly if you are comparing production with the hr then they are different plus even if you are comparing marketing de department performance with the marketing department then you need to define which sector okay you have automobile automobile in the you know company and you are comparing your market marketing department practices with another marketing department practices but of mobile phones so that is also not a best benchmark so we should compare apple to apple which means if you are an automobile company your marketing practices must be compared with the marketing practices of your comparable automobile industry company or competitor all right so that's what we mean all right if that's a financial company then it must be compared with the financial company so here are the these suggestions for internal benchmarking so just those who are watching online please pause the video and read it by yourself 
and those are right now so i would be including those in our ppt so you can just read that at least read once now social media as a control tool you can also use that so you have noticed something in in china many offices are using wechat for their office work as well they are not using emails they are just using wechat all right even if you are physically working in the organization the boss will say okay just wechat me because that can also be used as a control too so facebook twitter and other social media platform can be a valuable tool to gather the feedback plus on fee on in emails it's hard for everyone to reply but it, at wechat everybody can reply easily so you get instant control instant feedback so we have example here for example so recent example help government officials provide flood and fire information and direct resources during natural disasters it's more quick way so that's why we call this social media because society is interacting with one another on immediate basis now the global differences in control number one is distance creates formalized control the more a manager is distant from its employees its subordinates the more formal it would be the control he won't be using social media he just give them emails okay follow the mails wait for my mails send me on you know your work through mails so it means this manager's attitude is very formal he want to exercise full control and he wants to control his subordinates on 100% it can be good and can be bad because the manager is they he don't want to miss the deadline because his work depends on other activities as well so it would he would be very formal plus impact of technology for example new social media app is coming now you have to use for example messengers rather whatsapp or other wechat for example chinese who are working outside china they have to use whatsapp instead of wechat so so they will very you know uh, uh uh you know they are not handy with the whatsapp plus in wechat they can they are already used to it and it's hard for them to to switch from wechat to whatsapp plus wechat also have some payment activities and other stores and in 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 whatsapp they don't have these kind of stuff although we have a business app whatsapp business but that is also not equipped with the whatsapp you know wallet or something but in wechat you do have wallet as well plus you have to see the local laws as well there is a comparability issues in data collection as well right sometimes people think that okay my data is collected so they are very much secure you know concerned about their data why he is asking personal data why he is asking <clears throat> how many kids i have why he is asking all my personal details but in other culture in 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 when you are working in global countries in other culture it is quite normal for example in china 